If you've been diagnosed with cancer or have a family history of cancer, a healthcare provider may have recommended a genetic cancer risk assessment. My name is Dara McKinley, and I am an advanced practice nurse who specializes in hereditary cancer syndromes. In this video, we will review the basics of hereditary cancer syndromes, the three types of genetic test results, and the implications for you and your family members, common questions about insurance coverage and genetic discrimination laws, and next steps if you wish to proceed with genetic testing. There are several reasons why people are seen for genetic cancer risk assessment. Genetic testing can help explain why a cancer developed. It can help guide treatment decisions if cancer has been diagnosed. It can determine if you have a higher risk of developing another cancer in the future and guide future management to lower that risk. And it can help your family make decisions about their own health care based on your results. People who have been diagnosed with cancer or with a family history of cancer may worry about the cancer risks for their children or other family members. Genetic testing can give your family information about your future cancer risks. Having this knowledge can help you take the steps to prevent cancer, or it can help your healthcare provider develop a plan to possibly detect cancer at an earlier stage. During the genetic cancer risk assessment appointment, we will collect information about your personal medical history and previous cancer screenings or biopsies. We will also collect information about your family history of cancer. The genetic healthcare professional will use this information to help assess your personal and family risk factors for cancer. We recognize that not all people know their family history, and that is okay. In fact, some individuals may seek genetic testing simply because they are lacking information about their family history. With or without it, we are still able to proceed with your appointment. Next, we'll talk about the genetics of cancer. Every cell in our body contains DNA, which holds genetic information that is passed down from one generation to the next. Genes are sections of your DNA. All of us have inherited two copies of each gene. One copy is passed down from each parent. Many genes are involved in protecting you against cancer. Some individuals inherit a mutation or variant in a gene that causes it to not function properly. This is called a pathogenic mutation or variant. If you've inherited a pathogenic variant, you may have an increased risk for cancer. Although cancer can cluster in families, only about 5 to 10% of cancers can be attributed to a hereditary cancer syndrome. There are certain characteristics that are suggestive of hereditary cancer syndromes. Individuals who are young at the time of their cancer diagnosis, typically under the age of 50, individuals with multiple primary cancers, individuals with rare types of cancers. Examples of these include triple negative breast cancer, male breast cancer, pancreatic cancer, ovarian cancer, medullary thyroid cancer, and diffuse gastric cancer. Individuals with a family history, especially if on the same side of the family. In these families, you may see generations of family members affected by cancer. There are also other indications for genetic testing. For example, if a patient has metastatic or advanced cancer, the genetic test results could have an impact on their medical treatment. For the genetic test, a sample of either your blood or saliva is collected. It takes the lab about four weeks to process your sample. Once the results are in, you will return for a second visit to review the findings. There are three possible test results that you may receive, positive, negative, or a variant of uncertain significance, sometimes called a VUS. Positive result. A positive result indicates that a pathogenic variant was discovered among your genes on your test panel. This means that you might be at a higher risk for developing cancer. If an individual inherits a pathogenic variant, it does not mean there is 100% chance they will develop cancer. The cancer risk may be elevated, however, the degree of risk varies by gene and other factors like lifestyle and the environment. You can even see variability in cancer risk among family members of the same family. Your cancer risk and medical management will not be determined solely by your genetic test results. Cancer risk assessment incorporates additional factors such as your personal medical history, your family history, as well as environmental risk factors. There are cases where there may not be enough data to make specific screening recommendations. As we learn more about that specific gene, screening recommendations could emerge or evolve over time. 
If you have a positive result, you and your medical team will discuss the results further. In some cases, your results could have an impact on your surgical decision and could help guide your oncologist towards a specific medical treatment. Importantly, your genetic test result could help clarify if you are at risk for other cancers. This could provide you with an opportunity to modify screening and or consider risk-reducing surgeries. Your genetic information is passed down to the next generation. Thus, a positive result could help inform family members about their own cancer risks. There are two ways that a pathogenic variant can be passed down in a family. The first and most common is called an autosomal dominant inheritance pattern. If one of the parents has a mutated gene, the offspring will each have a 50-50 chance of inheriting that genetic mutation. The second way that a pathogenic variant can be passed down to a family member is called an autosomal recessive inheritance pattern. We do not see this as often in hereditary cancer syndromes. If both parents have a mutated gene, they are known as carriers, and they may not have an elevated risk of developing cancer. However, their offspring have a 25% chance of inheriting both copies of the mutated gene and developing the condition. They will also have a 25% chance they will not inherit either mutation and a 50% chance that they will inherit one copy and go on to be carriers themselves. If a pathogenic variant is found, we will recommend genetic testing for your family members. It is your responsibility to share your results with them. We recognize that this can cause anxiety and added stress for some individuals. Our team is here to support you and provide you with the tools to help communicate the genetic test results with your family members. Negative results. If the lab doesn't find any pathogenic variants in the genes that were tested, your test results will be negative. While this testing is designed to identify most variations in the genes analyzed, it is still possible that there are other variants that this technology is unable to detect. In addition, there may be other genes associated with cancer susceptibility that are not included on the panel or that are not known at this time. In the case of a negative genetic test result, your healthcare should be based on your personal and family history risk factors. Variant of unknown significance, also known as a VUS. A third result you can get is called a variant of unknown significance. This is where there is not enough information to say whether the variant is associated with an increased risk of cancer. Studies show that most of these variants will be reclassified later as benign. It could take several years for the reclassification, though. If a VUS is identified, it is important to know that it is not actionable. Your personal and family history will help determine if you have an elevated risk for cancer. Other considerations. There are also rare cases where a negative result is changed to a positive result or vice versa. Fortunately, we do not see this occur very often. Additionally, there are rare cases where the genetic test results are inconclusive because the sample collected was insufficient. If this should occur, an additional sample may be needed to clarify the results. There are also other times we might recommend family testing to help clarify if a genetic result is in fact inherited. Many people have questions regarding health insurance coverage. Historically, genetic testing was very expensive, but fortunately now most insurance companies will cover the cost. For most commercial genetic labs, the out-of-pocket cost is manageable. If your insurance does not cover genetic testing, or if your out-of-pocket cost is excessive, the labs will let you know. A common question about genetic testing is if the results could influence health or life insurance. A federal law known as the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act, commonly known as GINA, is a federal law from 2008 that protects against discrimination and unfair treatment due to DNA variants that may have an impact on health. GINA protects individuals from health insurance and employment discrimination. Life insurance, long-term care insurance, and disability insurance are not protected under GINA. However, in some states, there are laws that will provide additional protection beyond GINA. If you have more questions about this law, our healthcare providers can direct you to their website. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Any additional questions you may have will be addressed by the genetic healthcare professionals at Enlo Health Genetics.